This is the FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on 12th South Asian Conference. The participants are Veena Sikri, former diplomat and Ajay Banerjee, journalist. Well, good evening. We have had a very interesting session today where the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh has described India's relations in South Asia. Ma'am Sikri, Mr. Rajnath Singh, to reveal the figures that the government has done in the past one decade, around 13.14 billion US dollars worth of credit lines to the South Asian countries, and also another 4 billion US dollars in assistance to the neighborhood. This is huge money. This is almost 1.30 lakh crores, if I put it in rupee terms. Ma'am, how do we see this outreach in the past 10 years? How do you explain it? I think that uh, the neighborhood first policy of Prime Minister Modi has had a positive impact. And I say that because uh, it is true and I think Defense Minister Rajnath Singh himself mentioned it also that countries have, all the governments of India have attached importance to the neighborhood. But why I mentioned the last five years because here you see a new focus on two factors. One is focus on implementation. Now, this has been very good because in previous years, this was always a problem that was felt that India promises a lot, but then they don't implement it. You know, the will is there. They're interested in doing it. But somehow, whether it is bureaucracy, whether it is just uh, slowness, it was not being implemented. So now you do see that in the last five years, there's been such a focus on implementation. And some of the figures that given with Bhutan, we have done very large number of projects, maybe 62 projects. And with Bangladesh, we have completed almost 30 projects. In Afghanistan, we've done seven projects. In Maldives these three projects and with Nepal the 24 projects or so these completed projects have given a new boost that our neighborhood realizes that yes we are serious about doing these projects now the second aspect which we have to look at that what are the projects we are focusing on we have to make sure that these projects are those which are of benefit and interest to the neighboring country also. So we have to find win-win solutions, which is important because the people of those countries must also be ready and aware that this is of benefit to them. Say, for example, with Bhutan, the hydroelectric power projects, they sell the electricity after that. So it has raised their per capita income a lot because that money goes to the people of Bhutan and it helps them a lot. Say, for example, the energy cooperation with Bangladesh, where we are selling electricity to Bangladesh. You know, we've got an interconnected grid. This has had a tremendous impact on the common man because this is being done in areas like Khulna, which were greatly deficient in power supply before. And now, because of the intergrid connectivity with India in the South west region of Bangladesh and in the southeast region of uh, West Bengal, then you do see that industry can come in, it's better for everyday life, it's better for hospitals and so on. So you are seeing a lot of these projects which the neighboring countries are greatly appreciating. The third important aspect I would say is that Prime Minister Modi made bilateral visits to many of these countries which were pending for, for decades. I mean, with Nepal, I think he went for the first time after 17 years. With Sri Lanka, a bilateral visit took place after three decades and more. So all this has shown to the neighboring country that uh, India is seriously interested and that you can have a win-win situation. To tell to our listeners, uh, the Defense Minister Rajnath Singh was speaking at the 12th South Asia Conference today which started on Tuesday in New Delhi. And the theme of the conference is India's Neighborhood First Policy, Regional Perceptions. Out here, he mentioned specially the SARC or the South Asian Association of Regional Cooperation. He said that the SARC has, Ambassador Sikri, to quote him, SARC had not been utilized fully due to the behavior of one country. Of course, we all know the one country is our Western neighbor, Pakistan, though the Defense Minister did not mention it. What is holding back SARC and how is it not being fully utilized? You see, regional cooperation is important. Uh, there is no doubt about it because regional cooperation is the one way in which you can meet the challenges of globalization. Because under globalization, the big companies, they want to come to your countries and they want to have uh, set up factories or do trade. And individual countries may be at a disadvantage because size of the market is small and so on. But if you have regional cooperation, you can take benefit. And the synergy of being together is very great. So your intra-regional trade should be much higher than it is. South Asia is one of the regions in the world which has the lowest intra-regional trade. Trade among the countries of the region is very low. So India is quite sincere about raising these figures like bilateral trade, regional trade, investment, economic cooperation, climate change cooperation. And we have been expressing our willingness. But I think at the last summit, which was in Kathmandu, where our Prime Minister spoke, he had said that we are determined to have regional cooperation all together, if possible, if not with those who want to go along with us. So that is what we, has been happening in the last five, six years, that we are going ahead, but only with those countries who are keen to join. 
And I think that, you know, one example is the Motor Vehicles Agreement, where we had wanted to do it all together. It was actually agreed by SARC as a group. But in the implementation, some countries have again expressed their, one country has expressed their unwillingness. And so as a regional agreement, it has not worked. But now we are trying in the BBIN, you know, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, in the sub-regional context. Here also Bhutan has some concern, but Bhutan is willing that we can go ahead and they will join whenever they feel they're ready to join. So this is a constructive way forward through which the cooperation is being manifested. And this has shown that indeed economic cooperation is vital because economic cooperation impacts the life of the ordinary man. If you have economic cooperation, both countries are benefiting, then it really does impact the life of the ordinary man. It gives him jobs, it gives him income, and he can then feel that South Asia is one home where we can all benefit from each other. So this focus on regional cooperation is important. Ma'am, at the start of the program, I reeled out some figures, $13 billion of credit lines and $4 billion of aid to these South Asian countries. Does India's deep pockets or the India's rise economically in the past 30-40 years has helped these countries look at India more beneficially or they are still away from us? First of all, this kind of large amount of spending on a neighborhood investment, credit lines, grants, this is comparatively new. All these figures that you mentioned with Bangladesh, with Bhutan. These are 8 years only. Yeah, very much so. And the real focus, I can say, the big figures have come very, very recently. So I think this shows a determination to cooperate because I think the understanding that has come, and it is a very important understanding, that India to grow successfully has to take its neighbors along. And now you see, I can give the example for that in the peripheral areas of India, bordering our neighboring countries, say India, Nepal, Nepal or India, Bhutan, India, Bangladesh and so on, those areas still remain comparatively underdeveloped. So now in order to promote the development, we are actually doing projects like integrated check posts, encouraging border hearts, border markets where trade will take place, basically integrating the economies of the two regions, India and the neighboring country. It may be Nepal, it may be Bangladesh, maybe, so that the neighbor in the next country can also benefit from it. And it's not only the person sitting in the capital, which may be Kathmandu or Dhaka. So this is a very important aspect of bringing in people to people. And I would say that actually this is absolutely critical because I do think that right now our bilateral relations are excellent, whether with Bangladesh or with Afghanistan, all our other neighbors, Maldives and so on. It's excellent at the government level, at the government to government level, prime minister to prime minister summit level, ministerial level, projects are going on. But the next important step is to translate this into people to people, that the ordinary student, the academic, the corporate figure from the neighboring countries must also know more about India and be interested in coming to invest or being a partner in investment so that this uh, feeling about the benefits of neighboring uh, cooperation has to go down to all the levels. This is vital. Ma'am, there's a trilateral highway which is being built across Myanmar into Thailand and Vietnam. Do you think the trilateral highway will help us connect to Myanmar better? It is a very valuable project, but it's one of the projects that has been a little slow in implementation. Yes. So we need to actually push that one. All our projects with uh, Myanmar, the Khadadan multimodal, this trilateral highway, they've been a little slow on implementation and we need to push them up. Because they're a very valuable project because... India Northeast will become a channel of communication, you know. Tourism will increase, trade will increase, prosperity will increase. But it will also open access to Southeast Asia. It's a part of India's Act East policy. So this is an example where the Neighborhood First policy integrates with the Act East policy and, and continues into the Act East policy. Today morning at the South Asia Conference, uh, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh also made a very valid point. He said that the SAR countries have adhered to the principles of non-interference in each other's internal affairs, not supporting cross-border terrorism. Yes. He said, with the exception of one country. Again, he was referring to Pakistan. How do you see that? The one issue which has really brought all the countries of South Asia together, except, I think, as you said, one country, neighbor to the West, has been this issue of cross-border terrorism and, in general, security cooperation. I remember, for example, in Bangladesh, with the previous government, before Sheikh Hasina became prime minister, it was very difficult. We were just not on the same wavelength on security issues because all kinds of insurgent groups in the Northeast were being supported by the government at that time. But now we see that the governments in Bangladesh and so many other countries, they realize that encouraging 
terrorism from their soil aimed at another country is no good for them because it adversely affects them as well so i think security cooperation counter terrorism operations exchange of intelligence information this has been a very positive success story in uh, south asia our listeners would want to know how are relations with the other countries say nepal bangladesh sri lanka myanmar I think uh, the trust levels are very good with all our neighbors except as you said one I think that uh, the trust levels can be seen by the frequent exchange of visits uh, by the completion of bilateral projects Uh, the fact that these projects have benefited the people i will add two factors that i think need to be worked on much more and perhaps with high priority as i said people to people so there is very good cooperation so i think but we need to really spread the word at all level the second aspect i think which needs a little more work and it is more difficult i understand is financial sector cooperation so for example banking relations you know banking relations are very difficult in the neighborhood and as we know that banking relations are the first step towards having open trade free trade you know paying for the exchange of goods and so on so all the countries of uh, south asia have very good uh, trade and banking relations financial cooperation with other countries other regions but within south asia this area is weak and i can understand the concern concern is more about hawala movement of money the concern is about security issues and uh, the presence of insurgent groups and who may misuse channels i understand that is a problem but still there is a great need for creating trust through financial cooperation ma'am when you talk of people to people contacts with the countries like nepal bhutan bangladesh sri lanka myanmar could tourism be one of the first factors tourism is definitely a first factor because uh, you do find that uh, tourism is vital in creating that knowledge and appreciation of what the other country has so unless you've actually been and visited and understood and enjoyed you know your holiday in the other country it won't develop but to develop tourism you need to networks you need information you know you have to offer tourism packages as it happens in other parts of the world you go to thailand you go to singapore you go anywhere else there will be tourism packages two day five day 10 day whatever you want but in the neighboring country the tourism industry cooperation has started but it hasn't really developed that much and so you need to work on it with bangladesh for example medical tourism is very strong people come to india for medical treatment with many other countries also it's like that they come for medical treatment and so on but even here we need to increase the knowledge about the various facilities and the neighborhood country people should go back happy that they have received the proper treatment and so on so these are areas which we cannot ignore and just like we develop tourism with our distant neighbors we must give more importance to encouraging tourism from our neighboring countries ma'am the military angle of this cooperation is very important we have been training the sri lankans we have been cooperating with the bangladesh navy we have been training the myanmarese navy we have been working together with bangladesh nepal boys can join our indian army the gorkhas can and bhutan of course we provide them security and all that stuff how important is military training of these countries actually military to military cooperation is very vital it is a spin off of the security cooperation because you know the moment you realize that security is so important and it's a shared concern counter terrorism and so on then the next thing is how do you increase your security cooperation and one way i've seen it is vital through military cooperation i can give you the example of bangladesh where before prime minister shri sina came to power almost a complete absence of military to military cooperation so there were this led to real gap because in bangladesh for example border security force is controlled by the army is officered by the army and many of the internal security operations are ran at the senior levels by the army so that's why this army to army cooperation was vital to create that understanding that knowledge and just to know each other the last few years what we have developed with bangladesh is enormous young officers come and go just sometimes for tourism sometimes training course high level training course middle level training course and similarly we are doing with sri lanka and with maldives and with all our other neighbors and it's really worked a lot because otherwise uh, the kind of doubt tend to be created and in each of our neighboring countries the army the defense forces have a very important role so obviously i think it's a very vital area india's neighborhood first policy has been paying dividends in the past 8 to 10 years we have pumped in around 18 billion dollars in various projects in these countries close to us in south asia thank you for speaking to us ambassador vina sekri thank you you were listening to discussion on 12th south asian conference the participants were vina sekri former diplomat and ajay banerjee journalist This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website newsonair.com.
You can also follow us on the news on AIR app for updates. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsgtalks at gmail.com.